Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to share with you how to take good notes while you're in class, while you're in lecture, so that you can do better in school. Now, first and foremost, I believe that you usually want to write down notes with a notebook and paper, even if you can have a laptop in schools. Now, in colleges, universities, everyone has a laptop. In high schools, it's at least for, for me, they're still kind of forbidden because um, I guess kids are more likely to goof off with them. But in universities, like everyone has a laptop. But I believe that even if you have the choice of a laptop, if you can keep up with the pace that the teacher is talking, you write it down still. And the reason for that is there's been studies that show that uh, you are more likely to burn it into your memory by writing it down. There's something more visceral about that. Now, obviously, there are times in classes that I've been in where the teacher talks too quickly and goes too fast for you to write it down. And I'm a faster typer. So this is just some um, placeholder text to sh show you the general structure of how I would uh, outline things and, and write them down in notes. For most classes, I think a outline is the best structure to go and you're going to have to pace it off the teacher's speed um, especially in universities with higher level classes they can go pretty fast I remember a few classes I took in um, mammalian physiology or just like science they go pretty darn fast so the goal here is not to write down every single word that he says it's just to get the main point across Sometimes the teacher might say something in two sentences that you can summarize in two. Um, obviously, you don't want to make, make the mistake of summarizing too little because sometimes they say something more important. So it's that balance of not being too detailed but not being too concise. And um, it's really helped me out here. Um, you also have to keep in mind that you can always go back and fill in the gaps later. So I have that second lens I'm looking at. And I basically choose, if I have to choose, because the teacher is going too fast, I choose the point that they're making that they definitely uh, won't have in the textbook. You know, they, they may say something about how the human lungs work or the, uh, you know, a lizard's lungs work. And some of that's definitely going to be in the chapter. So obviously, I'm going to just say like, I'll say something here like, check the chat, check the uh, check the textbook on how human, or just say like lizard lungs work like X Y Z. Um, but you know, if he also starts talking about some of his own opinions on it, that's probably not going to be in textbook, but is going to be on the test. Write that down instead. Uh, choose that first. Um, and that might just be something like, you know, the book says that the human, the lizard's lungs work like this. But since I work in the lab, they actually work like this. You know, they actually, you know, also kind of move out, out, outwards like this. That's what you write down, not what the textbook says. So it may not be as overt as that, but sometimes it is. So here's just a general structure. And, um, you know, it might be something more simple like... Uh, you know, if we're going fast here, it might be something like I'm deleting some of it just to give you an idea here. Um, the main the main bullet it goes all the way to the left, and then any subtopics under that go to those sub bullets, and then any subtopics under that go under the next line, the next indent over. So to go with the lungs example, it might be like the human lung. Humans have two lungs. first lung on the left is closer to the heart. It pumps air faster and closes a shorter distance to the heart because it's closer. This lung is called blah blah blah. And then you might hit a point where the teacher is talking too fast and then, you know, he says something about the lung. And then part of it's in the textbook, which you can check later. And then part of it's not. That's what you write down. And then it might be, he might say something like, you know, the textbook says this, but 
I really care about this and this, or I think he might not be as overt as that. He might just say like, um, the textbook says this, but make but um, lungs actually function function to pass oxygen around in conjunction with the blood system and that's more important or something like that that's what you write down not not the other stuff um, and then he might jump into the second lung and how how that functions so then you you make that a second bullet and then after that he might jump to a different topic like the uh, immune system so as you can see that's how you kind of let it flow um, for math um, obviously you kind of want to use maybe a hybrid laptop or and uh, journal or just all journal because some of the stuff you're going to have to draw out like the equations and stuff even for organic chemistry you have to draw that out with your hand so you can't write type it out at least not easily so that's something that you have to really consider when you're basically doing your work um, so think about that um, I think what really took my math game to a 10x higher level was my ability to really start taking notes in class I went from not taking any notes and goofing off in class to basically writing down as much as they said and then the second part of it which is just as important putting in the work after class to review those notes and review the textbook usually I took so good notes and the teacher so often spoon fed it to you if you got a good teacher that I didn't have to even check the textbook but that's another part of it like I said here you know when you're taking these notes about the lungs there's going to be parts that are going to be in the textbook but if you don't review it afterwards you're going to screw up as well because you can't remember it you have to put in the work and that's a huge part of it so you know if you know the teacher was going fast and I wrote down this part about the lungs that was his opinion that's on the test um, but he also mentioned some stuff in the chapter that you didn't have time to write down but maybe you made a quick note to like check you know check in the textbook maybe just CT whatever code you want to use check textbook lungs uh, shape that's something you actually have to check later if you don't do that work on your own time afterwards then you're screwed as well in a way not screwed screwed but you're not going to remember that on test day um, so part of it is actually putting in the work I know maybe that's not what you want to hear but that's I got if you have the right attitude you can choose to have the right attitude it will make such a big difference I chose to be excited about this because it was almost like a game to me every little step I took I leveled up every little bit of work I put in that I didn't used to put in it leveled up my game in school so that's what I did you know when I took math notes you know the teacher would write down in detail how to do the problem and then write out an example I would take those notes home spend just sometimes just 20 minutes to review those notes or as long as it took for me to fully understand how she did it then on test day I knew how to do it I aced a lot of these exams or did very very well it was magic I couldn't even believe my eyes because I basically just took good notes reviewed it and the notes were the crux of my my success um, so much so that I didn't even have to review the the textbook because the notes covered it all now there were some times where the notes just didn't make sense maybe the example kind of sucked or I didn't couldn't copy them down fast enough um, that's when my initiative started to kick in I would sit in the front of the class sometimes get out of my chair and sit in front of the desk and I would lean into it I would be proud of it some of the kids would be like man what are you doing and I'd be like I'm trying to do well in school here and you know some of the kids want to do well too so they're like okay I see you others were just kind of like laughing about it still but who cares you lean into that um, other times I'll just stay after or or like 10 minutes after class and say hey I you kind of went too fast there um, no offense but could I stay for 10 minutes and copy down these notes most teachers are gonna be like yeah sure hey you can take a picture of the notes that I have 
and then boom you have extra notes um, that initiative gets you ahead and then after class you go to the textbook for those questions that were still confusing those problems that the teacher didn't explain well you review it and boom you're good to go so hopefully that helps and that's how I take notes um, obviously there's different tools tactics you could use Evernote you could use uh, whatever other word processor or tool out there is, is out there but you get the idea here um, that's how you do it obviously there's um, methods to kind of work on uh, retention and memory and um, one one would just be to do the problems again another is to kind of like take out certain words here like make a copy of your notes and then you know play a fill in the blank game so maybe like take out some of these words and then leave turn them into blanks and then try and fill in those words and then once you get good in that like sometimes it's because like the phrasing here looks too familiar to you so you might even rephrase this section here to something else or put it in a different order or as flashcards so that it's not as easy to tell and then you can fill in the blanks and that's how you can start to retain it if it's math you know do different variations of the problems so so that's you know there's different ways of recall and hopefully that will help you uh, do better in school good luck